the day Nigeria killed my brother. The day Nigeria happened to my brother, my younger brother, Dennis, godson, Ukato. He traveled to Nigeria against all odds, against all advice from us not to, just as we came out of the lockdown in 2022. He lived in Rome. He was never one to be uh, worried or scared of Nigeria. He always said, Nigeria is my country. Nothing if you do me there. But we thought, no, come on. Lockdown, it's just concluded. And you know, with your own medical history, you shouldn't be traveling. But like I said, against all entreaties from family members, he decided to go to Nigeria. He traveled to Nigeria in April and he planned to stay four weeks. One of the main reasons he went to Nigeria was to be with his wife because throughout the lockdown, the wife was planning to join him in Rome, but that wasn't happening because of all embassies were shut down. Then on this fateful day, May 13th, 2022, we have this WhatsApp group for our family members. And I noticed the group was just buzzing. And I saw that he was the one leading the whole, <laughs> the whole buzz in, in the WhatsApp group. And I was like, what's happening? You, you seem overly happy. And he said, oh, I'm going back to my country. I'm like, where's that? He said, Rome. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Oh, you're flying back today? He said, no, I'm flying back tomorrow. Tomorrow would be May 14. And I then sent him a message, this time personally to him, privately saying, I'm really proud of you. You've done well. You've achieved well. In the evening of that day, I went out jogging through the park, coming back, starting to, to, to slow down my jogging and I started walking, picked out my phone and I saw a series of messages just flying through. So it meant that there was no network on my phone because this message has been sent since like two o'clock of that day. They didn't come through my phone in an orderly manner. They came just half as early. When I started to read it, what I saw was, please call, 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 it's Dennis, it's Dennis. My heart just sunk, I almost fell. And some ladies in front of me was like, are you okay, are you okay? My heart just sunk because the last time we tested each other on WhatsApp was in the morning of that day, Thursday the 13th, May 2022. So it transpired that they got to the hotel in Lagos in anticipation to fly the next day back to Rome. And his wife realized it became unresponsive. And immediately she raised the alarm and said, we can't let you remain here, we have to go find a hospital where you could do a checkup to see what was happening. He's had these episodes before where he becomes unresponsive and uh, unable to speak and almost as if he's having stroke. So what happened following that was, according to the wife when she started narrating the story to me, was they traveled all over Lagos from two o'clock when they got to Lagos looking for a hospital. By the time I got to the wife, it was about 9 p.m. They were still traveling Lagos. And I got mad and said, what is happening? Don't forget this was coming off the lockdown and Lagos hospitals were all very busy. And I said, go back to Lagos University Teaching Hospital. She said they wanted money. I said, you should have called me. But again, she was a bit confused. So she was hyper. So she didn't know what she was doing. So I said, okay, that's fine. I said, pass the phone to the taxi driver. I spoke to the taxi driver. I said, please, sir, take this boy as your son. And the man said, that's what I've been doing all day. I've been driving them all through Lagos and I haven't talked about payment. I said, don't worry about that, it's going to come. And he said, please take them back to that hospital and we'll take it from there. So I scrambled to call people in Benin and friends in Lagos to come to the rescue. So by the time they got to the hospital, the hospital said they've got a place, but they will have to pay money. And how much are we talking about? About 350,000 naira. So I scrambled and sent that money away to them so that I could get a place for him. He managed to check into that room past 1 a.m. That was how bad it was, even with the money. By the time he checked into the room, I, now I was on video call with them. He walked into that room by himself, climbed up the stairs, went into the room. The moment I saw the room, I said, this don't look like a hospital. It looks like where they just let people just go sleep and die. They said this is a so-called VIP governor room. I'm like, I don't care whether it's a VIP room. I'm not seeing any medical equipment or facilities around that maybe they could use to do checks and all of that and they said but this is how we got and i was stressed i said okay this boy has been unresponsive since 2 p.m and he's been traveling in a taxi for that long now he's got a room i don't care let him rest but what transpired now was later was that they put him in a induced coma i don't know how they got to that decision to put him in an induced coma. So we scrambled and we got hold of his doctor in Rome. And the doctor was really mad when he heard what was happening. He said, no, 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 no. Dennis was very fine, they did all the checks. He was up to date with his medication and nothing was supposed to have happened like this. And he was just asking what's happened anyway. He said, if you guys can get him back to Rome, we'll stabilize him or I will send his medical documents over to the 
uh, medical team and look. The next day, the doctor came and said, okay, this is what's going to happen. They're going to give him till the evening to see if he was stabilized enough. And if I could fly into Nigeria and fly out with him back to Rome. So I was already planning that. So they would need somebody because he can't just fly by himself. But the doctor wanted us to just watch throughout the Friday and see what happened. So this so-called senior cardiologist, they claimed was going to return following the meeting on Friday. The guy never returned back. Nobody ever saw him. Even after my brother took his last breath on May 16th, 2022. My brother, Dennis, such a lovely boy. You know, he, we would talk every day on WhatsApp. He, he, not, he regularly called me 2 p.m. because he knew that was the time I would go for lunch and we would touch on everything, every subject imaginable. Following my brother's death, I did a video where I spoke about things. It went viral. What I would say is there was a lot of doctors who came to us to support and there was equally loads of doctors who came and insulted us in all of this though. I'm still Nigerian first and foremost, and this is what I always tell people. Your medical practitioners, your medical professionals, you should first and foremost seek to treat people no matter what, no matter the, where they are at any level of life. There was a, a medical emergency. Imagine all of those up to nine, ten hours that it took my brother to go around Lagos looking for a place. And when he finally got a place, he was left in that room for a couple of more hours. That would have been the time to save him. This happened in 2022. And a lot like this has happened to people in Nigeria before my brother. And a lot has happened, obviously. It seems that we never learn until, as they say in Nigeria, until Nigeria happened to you. But it shouldn't be the case. You guys swore an oath to a very, very modest and trustworthy profession. It's a privilege for you to be a doctor. It's a privilege for you to be a nurse or a medical practitioner. And you should also try as much as possible to uphold the ethics and values of your profession. Your main job is to treat people, regardless of where they come from. Not because they know one or two persons in the hospital or because they have money. Regardless of their status in life, you should hold your professionalism high. Protect the lives of people. That is all I would say.